How's it going everyone? I hope you're all having a nice week. I wanted to start this video off with a trade that I did with my buddy Jeff. He had been looking for some GameCube games to kind of beef up his collection and I uh, have been going through my collection. I pulled out a couple doubles. So this is what I had ended up trading him. It was all complete in box and all in really nice shape. And then this is the stuff that he had that I was looking for. I know that spawn game isn't that great, but I had been looking for it. Uh, he had some complete in box DS stuff that I've been looking for, especially that Castlevania. And this Fire Emblem is complete, but it is missing the game. But for being in a cardboard box, it was in just an excellent shape this is about an equal value trade either way i wasn't looking really to split hairs but i was just happy to get rid of some stuff in my collection and to get some stuff that i was looking for and i highly recommend trading amongst friends instead of trading into a game store okay so now it's time for our weekly trip to savers which is my favorite out of all the thrift chains here is a howie mendel bobblehead from deal or no deal you can't push that red button but the batteries were dead so he didn't say anything here is a Simpsons watch with Bartman on it, brand new. I have no clue what year this came out, but it was only three bucks. Here is a bag of random power cords for $3. There is a Nintendo DS power cord at the bottom, so I was going to take my chance with this. Here's a copy of NBA 2K16 for 10 bucks and a Wii with no controllers and both doors busted off for 40 under a scratched glass. This Savers made this new little makeshift shelf here for their games. They actually have a pretty decent selection of Wii stuff in here and all the discs are taken out and put behind the glass so you can't steal them. Remember, if you want to play Red Steel, get Red Steel 2 and not the original. Here's Rogue Trooper, Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, and Resident Evil Umbrella Chronicles. And for some of the trash, here's American Idol, uh, NHL 11, Sesame Street, and Sleepover Party. The Wii is riddled with just shovelware games. Here's a handy board for the Game Boy. This thing is ridiculous, and I really kind of regret passing on this just because of how ridiculous it is and not because I would ever even use it. Here's a picture of what it looks opened up on a Game Boy and there's like speakers and magnifying glass and a joystick and everything. Here's a John Cena wrestling doll, probably a steal for three bucks. Here is Sonic the Hedgehog Doomsday Project. I have no clue where this falls in the canon or if it even does or where it would fall. Here is another Disney princess's plug and play with Ariel on one side and whoever that is, Sleeping Beauty or I don't know who that is, Snow White. Uh, if I wasn't drowning in plug and plays already, I would have picked this up to review. Uh, here are two GameCube memory cards and an Xbox One controller battery, 10 bucks a piece. Not bad if you're looking for it. And then here is a fishing rod bundle for the Wii. And can you believe that someone had the stones at one point to charge $25 for that? Here are two Nintendo plushies for three bucks. I didn't want the Super Mario one, but my girlfriend loves Yoshi and she collects Yoshi plushes. And I know for a fact she didn't have that one. Here is a clone trooper figure and it's covered with highlighter, but it just still looks so badass. And I think this was only two bucks. Here are some Sonic comic books. It seems like it spans all over the series. There's some Sonic X there. So there's some regular Sonic the Hedgehog. The art looks excellent. Here's another game rack. Unfortunately, this week it's all garbage, but there was this game here, New Zealand Story, which is this kind of platformer arcade hybrid that I've been wanting to play. Unfortunately, it was cart only and it was six bucks, which is a little more than I was willing to pay for it. Here's this DVD player that's like built into a CD player. It just has a screen that flips up and plays it. I've never seen anything like that. Here's an overpriced PS2 controller. Hopefully it stays there to the end of eternity. Here are three Skylanders portals and not only are they overpriced, they're not even uniformly priced. Here is a Star Wars Lego set for 50 bucks. I mean, it's one of the cool things here is it does have an Admiral Akbar minifig, but still $50 is insane. Now here's what came in that bag. Uh, there's this tripod for a camera, a Nintendo DS charger. There's a mini USB cable for a PS3 controller and then a USB to AC adapter. Not bad at all for about $2.40. I have use for all that stuff. Now here is the copy of Resident Evil 4. Unfortunately, it did not come with the manual, but other than that, the copy was clean and it was just in really nice shape. Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition was released in 2011 and is the sixth major installment in the series. It's an upgrade of the previously released GameCube and PlayStation 2 versions, boasting better visuals, a different camera view, and motion controls. This is one of the most beloved entries in the series, so any version is worth picking up. But I'd say unless you love motion controls, just stick to the PS4 or Xbox One release. Here's Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. This one did come complete and in just an excellent shape. For $2.40, this kind of game is just a straight up no brainer. Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles was released in 2007 and is an on rail shooter. This is the kind of game that just makes you feel like you're in the arcade, and I believe that it's the best use of Wii motion controls. The Resident Evil vibe is a perfect addition to the genre. 
Here's Rogue Trooper Court Zone Massacre. This game unfortunately also did not come with its manual, but just like Resident Evil 4, it's really clean. This is a game that I've never ever heard of or seen. Rogue Trooper Court Zone Massacre was released in 2009 and is a third person shooter that also uses Wii motion controls. I was not impressed at all while playing the game and it really just felt like a budget title to me. I'd say just steer clear of this one. Here are those two plushies, here's a Super Mario which I didn't even want but they will not separate them. And then here's that mini Yoshi again, my girlfriend does collect them and I knew she didn't have that one. And then here's her Yoshi collection, and so there's the new edition right there. When I was out and about, I saw these Golden Girls dorbs, and I don't believe we've seen these ones so far. I think the only ones we've seen were Sophia, so I thought I'd get a shot of these. And then yet again, here is the flea market on Saturday morning. Honestly, I just love going to this place. I love getting up and getting out. It wasn't too hot yet. And there's a lot of people here and I'm like the cat in the billiards table where I'm just like soon I will get one of the hot dogs from this place. Alright so first up is a shake weight. Uh, I'm going to show every shake weight I see because you look ridiculous using them but they probably will tone your arms. Here's the gig. It's like a Guitar Hero type game but it came with an actual guitar. Uh, here are some red box rentals. I was hoping there'd be some games in here but they were all movies. What do we have? Ted 2. Now you could take a blow dryer and you can get that sticker off in the middle very easy. So it's not the end of the world if you uh, find some of these and it still has it. I can't even read what that is. And uh, Straight out of Compton. So I mean there's some good movies in there. Now here's a tarp of just wires. It's just like a big ball of wires and controllers and stuff. I saw this guy like maybe two months ago and he wanted 10 bucks a piece on everything in there. So I walked away. Then I saw him probably a month ago and he wanted five bucks a piece. Now he's saying pretty much grab some stuff and make an offer. Uh, there's some nunchucks in here. There's a zapper right there. There was a classic controller. I know I say I have a million nunchucks, which I do and I don't need anymore. But I was just trying to bundle stuff together. There's a bunch of stuff in here. I don't even know what it is. What else? We have? There's a GameCube, a uh, third-party GameCube controller, a Wii stand. I used to have an ongoing joke about like building a house out of those because I would find them in the dumpster all the time and they're just worthless. Here's a blue Xbox controller. I love the color of this, but I don't need another one. And this is probably my favorite find of this pile. It is a green transparent wireless original Xbox controller. I love the wireless controllers and I've been looking for one for the Xbox. Now here's the receiver which is nice and big because it fits the memory cards and stuff. It also is the same color so you can tell they pair together and it doesn't get lost like the PS2 one because it's pretty big and you can, you know, find it. Uh, there's the classic controller there. What else we got here? Here is just a table full of movies and games. Everything here was a buck. I mean, this might be like 10 footer central, but this stuff is complete. And here's a PlayStation over here. The guy said he wanted uh, 50 bucks for it. So I was walking away from that. On here, there's a bunch of CDs. What do we have here? Here's a copy of Tekken 2. I didn't have this game and it's complete. And yeah, it's beat, but for a buck, I'm going to take the chance on it. There's Madden 11. Uh, those ATV Off-Road Fury games are pretty fun. Here is Blitz 2001. I believe there was three games right around that or four games like right around that generation Blitz and then 2000 and 2001. Some of this stuff, by sheer chance, will be in good shape, but most of it is probably wrecked. Here's the back of the disc uh, for Tekken 2, and you can just see, look at that. And that's what happens with those CDs, they're just not taken care of and they just get wrecked. There's a copy of What's a Story Morning Glory, which is uh, one of my favorite CDs of all time. Seal, he got a bell up there. Here's another game here, which is just a NASCAR game, I honestly can't remember which one it is. Uh, NASCAR, just NASCAR racing. And again, everything on this table was a buck. All right, and then I finally bring it up to the guy and uh, he wanted 30 bucks for all the controllers and then a dollar a piece on the games. I told him, uh, no way. Then he said, okay, 25 bucks on the controllers. Oh, there is an NES power supply in there also. He said 25, I said, uh, nah, it's, I'm all set. He got to 20 plus, you know, a dollar a piece for the games. And I tried to haggle him down a little farther, but he wouldn't go any farther. But this stuff is honestly just, it's in, like the controllers are in great shape. They just need a little TLC. And they're things that I have been looking for. So 20, that was, I could live with that. Now here's another guy. At 8.45 in the morning, this guy was leaving the flea market because he wanted to go home and just chill out in his pool. So he said, make me an offer and everything. He said he is a wholesaler, but he said he wanted to let it go cheap. So he showed me some GBA stuff. Nothing crazy here. What do we got? Uh, Harry Potter. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3, Jimmy Neutron, and I believe there's one more in here, uh, Spongebob, yeah, I mean, just kind of dumpy games. And then there was this box of PS2 stuff and then Xbox in there. The best thing in here was this copy of Simpsons Hit and Run, 
which was complete. The disc is wrecked on this, I'll tell you right now, but he only wanted two bucks a piece, so I didn't even bother checking it, which I should have, but the case alone is, is worth two dollars. And there's a copy of Pimp My Ride that I see every now and then that I just want to play so badly because I don't understand what it could be besides just putting a car together. Two bucks a piece on those. So here's a bin of just random stuff. This is a dock for charging four Wii controllers simultaneously. The problem is you also need the batteries that go with it. I found a Zippo lighter at the bottom, but because it was brand named and they knew what it was, she wanted 25 bucks for it. Uh, here are some Wii trash accessories that like clip on. This is these are the tennis rackets. Now here's a dollar shelf outside of one of the guy one of the vendors' booths. Everything on here is a dollar. There are games and movies, but I did see these demo decks for Attack on Titan. This must be like a trading card game, like um, Magic or something like that. But there are two demo decks. I've never seen this. I have heard of the show, but maybe they were worth it for a dollar. I don't know. So here's the stuff I picked up. This is the copy of Tekken 2. I swapped the case on this and it cleaned it up and it looks fine, but the back of this is wrecked. But I mean, it booted right up. Tekken 2 was released in 1996 for the PlayStation. It's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with a large roster of 25 playable characters, which is actually 15 more than its arcade counterpart. When it comes to fighting games and you've already been spoiled by Street Fighter, I'd say stay away, but if you're looking for a new fighter and want to box as a kangaroo, I'd recommend it. Okay, and here's the PS2 copy of Hit and Run. I've now found it this year for every home console that it came out for. Now this is complete, but this disc would not boot. It has to be buffed and it does not work. But I figured that the case alone is still worth $2. The Simpsons Hit and Run was released in 2003 and is a clone of the Grand Theft Auto series. Don't confuse it with the game that it followed from 2001, which is a clone of Crazy Taxi called Road Rage. In Hit and Run, you will explore Springfield with different characters, drive many vehicles, and complete various tasks around the city. Here's that controller lot all cleaned up. This is a green wireless controller. I don't know if it has anything to do with Halo or it's just kind of this military type green. Uh, there's the receiver, which is nice and big, unlike the PlayStation 2, so it doesn't get lost as easily. Here's an NES power supply. Next to that, we have two nunchucks, which again, I just have a ton of, but I decided to bundle everything together. And then here is the Wii White Classic controller. Everything here cleaned up fine. None of the cables are clipped and they are all in nice shape and they work. I tried them all out, so it's nice. I love collecting controller variations and just controllers in general. All right, and finally, here's the other flea market that I go to. Just a beautiful day out. I love this little pond they have here. It's just a nice little place to walk around. This one does cost $1.50 to get into, but it's definitely worth it. Right away, we're, we got a rude awakening here. It's a bunch of 10-footers, uh, some old sports games on a table. Uh, here are some DVDs, a buck each for six for five or 15 for 10 isn't bad, but DVDs for me are a hard sell these days. Uh, you can probably find Blu-rays a, a dollar a piece also. Speaking of that, uh, here's another table. Here's a copy of It Follows for $2, and I love this movie, and I didn't buy it. I don't know why, and when I went back there before I left, it had, was already gone. I should have got it. It's a great movie. Go see it if you haven't. It's, it's great. Uh, here are some CDs, a lot of 90s stuff. There's Disturbed there, uh, The Sickness. Beastie Boys are in there. Here's Offspring. This is one of my favorite CDs of the 90s. Smash. I love it. There's Blink-182 in there. It's just a bunch of good stuff if you're still collecting CDs. Uh, here are some games. Deadliest Catch. I think I showed this before. I just want to play it because, again, I, it's kind of like um, Pit My Ride. I don't really understand what it could be. Here's the Buffy uh, game for PS2. Both of them are really good. They're beat-em-ups. Pretty fun. Here's a new stand. This guy has never been there since I've been going. He wanted $3 on all of his games, uh, $6 a piece on the N64 stuff. Immediately I see this copy of Mario Kart Wii and I snag it. Uh, what else you got here? Uh, there's an Assassin's Creed flag there. There's some controllers here. What do we got here? True Crime, Need for Speed, uh, Budokai, let's see, NASCAR. Honestly, this stuff's in really nice shape. There's a copy of Blur down there. Then I find this copy of Modern Warfare 3. Now, this game just became backwards compatible for the Xbox One. So I'm going to pick it up. Here's more at the chicken. I've never seen this game before, but it's in beautiful shape. It looks like it's never been played, so I'm going to pick it up. There's a wave bird here. It is missing the receiver, but it does have the back battery cover. And then he has a starter kit with uh, some memory cards and some cables and stuff. But he wanted 10 bucks on it, which isn't bad, but I don't really buy third party stuff. Anyway, 14 bucks for the three games and the controller was a steal. And there's that troll thing from Toy Story, which is awesome. I'd say I should have picked it up, but I really don't have any room for it. A couple booths down, this was another bin of all games in here were $2. A lot of heaps in here, but then they had a splashdown, Rides Gone Wild for two bucks complete. It looks great, I thought I'd pick it up. A few more booths down, there's another bin of games. Lego Harry Potter isn't bad. I thought I was gonna find another copy of um, Modern Warfare 3, but it had ghosts in there. What else we got here? 
I mean, this stuff's all bordering, honestly, like 10 footer. You got Curious George there, Sonic Heroes, Guitar Hero 2, Kane and Lynch, Dog Days, good God. Here's a box of Pez dispensers. I don't see these very often. I think Pez dispensers are cool. I mean, I'm not going to collect them, but I think they're cool. Here is a table of pop figures. So these are some, I guess, cheaper ones. At one point, they had a Baxter Stockman here for like $6. I don't think it's worth anything, but it's still a cool pop. I try to stay away from the pops thing because I don't want to fall into it like head over feet. You just kind of seem to go insane when you start collecting pops. Not that that's a bad thing. Some Porgs in there. Alright, so for the stuff I picked up, here's Mort the Chicken. Again, this is a game I've never heard of, but it was complete and in beautiful shape. It looks like it's never even been played. Mort the Chicken was released in 2000, and even though it might look like it was based off of a TV show or a movie, it's an entirely original IP. The game is a collecting platformer that has you going around and rescuing lost baby chicks, cracking eggs, and collecting medals. Everything about this game just screams PS1, and I had a lot more fun playing this than I thought I would. Here's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Everyone should know that this game at least exists. It's one of the highest selling games of all time. I played through it a long time ago. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 was released in 2011 and is the 8th entry in the series. The game picks up exactly where its predecessor left off. Modern Warfare 3 sold over 6 million copies in its first day of sale. If the first person shooter genre is your thing then this game is right up your alley. Here's another copy of Mario Kart Wii. This is the third one I think I've found this year so far, but I mean they just come and go so quick because I've been trading all the time and everyone's looking for it. Mario Kart Wii was released in 2008 and is the sixth game in the series. This version allows you to use a steering wheel with motion controls if you'd like to or just stick with the standard controls that the series is known for. This is the game where Rosalina and Dry Bowser first made their appearance. It's not my favorite game in the series, but it's still excellent. Splashdown Rides Gone Wild just looks ridiculous and it's a game I don't think I see very often but I know that it's pretty common so for two bucks I'm gonna pick it up but it does need to be resurfaced. Splashdown Rides Gone Wild was released in 2003 exclusively for the PlayStation 2 and is full of different racers, game modes, and tricks. My favorite feature in the game is the constantly changing weather and track layout. There's three pieces to the Wavebird, there's the battery cover, there's the controller itself and the receiver, and you almost never find all three of them together. This one's missing the receiver. Here's a copy of LEGO Marvel Super Heroes, I left the price tag on it, uh, it was $3, it was complete. The LEGO games are really good, they're just so much fun. LEGO Marvel Super Heroes was released in 2013 and is the best selling game in the LEGO series. If you're not into Marvel, LEGO has created many games across many fandoms so there's bound to be one that'll suit you. I don't think that there's been a perfect LEGO game yet so it'll definitely anger you at times but they're still easily worth playing. Here's Pursuit Force Extreme Justice, this is the sequel to Pursuit Force. Some guy had some games on his table and movies and he said he wanted three bucks a piece or he would do two for five so I grabbed that along with this Fooly Cooly DVD. I believe this has four episodes on it. I was big into this uh, show when I was younger. I haven't seen it in forever and the show just came out again so I thought five dollars for the two of those was okay. Okay, now for one of my favorite finds ever at the flea market. Somebody sold me this voice activated R2-D2 for $2. I'm pretty sure that they thought it was broken because it was missing batteries and it wouldn't respond to you. But this thing is incredible. It's so far ahead of its time. It will look at you when you're talking to him. He'll listen to you. He'll respond. He'll drive around. He'll sing. You can play games with him. And sometimes he'll even just tell you no. You can tell him to do something and he'll just shake his head no and just do whatever he wants. You can put a beer in his little claw here and give him directions and he'll go bring it to somebody. Thank you for watching. As always, stay nerdy, and I'm going to leave you guys with some footage of R2. Hey, R2. Do you remember Princess Leia? This is our most desperate hour. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only help. Hey, R2. Do you remember Darth Vader? Hey, R2. Do you remember Anakin? Hey, R2. Game mode. Dance party.
Hey, R2. Do you remember Han Solo? Hey, R2. Do you remember Chewbacca? Hey, R2. Do you remember Luke Skywalker? Hey, R2. Light on. Hey, R2. Light off. R2. Light off. R2. Light off. You're being sassy. Getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on, getting your nerd on. I got a raging nerd on.